Hello, and welcome to the East Africa Business Podcast. This show is all about showcasing entrepreneurs who are building businesses in this exciting part of the world. From reading high-level articles about the region, it can be difficult to really understand what's going on. And so my hope is that these interviews somewhat bring it to life, as well as stoking your curiosity to go find out more. On that, do take a look in the archive for more episodes that we've done. But for now, let's enjoy the rest of this funky intro music and then get started with the show. In many parts of the world, ordering a taxi from your smartphone is now the new norm. Until July 2016, though, this was not possible in the country of Ethiopia, Africa's second most populous country. There are several nuances about Ethiopia which made it difficult, and it was only once Habtamu returned to his home country after several years away that the capital Addis Ababa now has this service. It's worth saying that Ethiopia is distinctly different from the other countries featured so far on this podcast. The ruling government runs a relatively closed economy and there are strict regulations on anything involving interaction with the international business community. In this interview, Habtamu and I discuss just this and some of the workarounds that he has had to develop in order to operate in Ethiopia. We cover how people have debit cards but can only use them to withdraw cash, national company ownership for particular industries, and also how, unlike other countries that Uber and the like work in, it's illegal for private drivers to earn money giving rides. There's lots in this episode around doing business in a difficult place and the strategies to overcome it. And so beyond just learning about business in Ethiopia, I have no doubt that you'll get a lot from it. In any case, here is Hab Tamu. Cool. So I'm here today with Hab Tamu from Zayrides. Hab Tamu, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Cool. So just to get us started, can you tell us a bit about you and a bit about Zayrides? Sure. Uh, like you said, yeah, my name is Hab Tamu Tadesa and I am the founder of Zayride. And I was born here in Ethiopia, but I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, and I have a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Massachusetts. And uh, so I, here I am, I returned back to Ethiopia to start uh, Z-Ride because, uh, you know, like I said, I used to live in Boston and I used to work for Uber. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I seen that uh, how Uber, uh, you know, entered a market where there's already enough, you know, uh, supply of taxis, and but still they were able to, um, you know, uh, get a lot of customers by reducing the price and they made it safer. So I was like, okay, if Uber can be successful in this market, you know, imagine if a similar, you know, <clears throat> company can do it in Africa where there's an efficient supply of uh, transportation. You know, here in Addis Ababa, only the 4% of the 5 million people own their own means of transportation. That means 96% of the people rely on public transportation. So I thought to myself, oh, we need this, you know, really bad. And then uh, that's why I decided to you know, uh, launch the service. Very cool. Yeah. So in simple terms, is it like Uber for Ethiopia? Exactly. It's, it's okay. Uber for Ethiopia, but <clears throat> we are better than Uber. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell me how, how uh, you so better. We have, uh, so what we did is the first thing is here in Africa, internet is not as, as fast as, you know, the rest of the world, you know, and, and in the West we have 4G, LTE, whereas in Ethiopia, it's, I mean, we have 4G in the capital, but if you drive outside of the capital, you have uh, 2G. So we were able to compress our application five times so it can work on slow internet. That's the, one of the first thing we did. The second one is we wanted to um, include uh, people with feature phones. So people that you know will not be able to download our application. So we, we set up this call center and they give us a call and then we have a manual dispatching system. So the drivers gets it as if the request is coming from a smartphone but we're actually doing it manually from our office. So Good. we did that, and then we also added an ambulance service, so we have, you get to call an uh, ambulance. Uh, uh, exactly, yeah. you can also uh, request ambulance, so that's how we are better than Uber. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, uh, and just to clarify, Uber aren't in Addis? Uber is not in, in Addis. Actually, uh, logistics uh, this is, are actually considered logistics, and logistics is only cons- uh, reserved for Ethiopians. Oh, here, exactly. So if Uber wants to come into Ethiopia, somehow they have to uh, partner with us or another company that's uh, that, that is local. It's like an Ethiopian entity. Exactly. Whereas in in Kenya, for example, it's, Uber is there. Exactly. And they're, they're existing as their US entity. Exactly. I see. Yeah. Right. Ethiopia is a little different in the financial sector and in um, 
logistics is uh, reserved for Ethiopia. I mean, there's a, a loophole and there's ways you can work with the local companies, but it has to be through a partnership. I see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so that means that up until Zayride, there was nothing really equivalent at all. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, I mean, how has that been going to market? Have you had to educate customers, or do people kind of just get it? You know, strangely enough, you know, people knew what Uber does. Oh, okay. So when we come here, we say, okay, we're the Uber of Ethiopia, and everybody, you know, understood it, especially, you know, the early adapters and, uh, you know, the, the new generation and the college students, the high school students, all the two, 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 uh, what is it, 2 million 500 people that are on Facebook just within an ad, they, they, they got it. So that's how we were able to uh, communicate. You know, we we approached the early adapters and the youngsters before we launch in our marketing campaign, which we haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. So everything is through uh, word of mouth and social media, uh, so far. Okay, so, okay. So just uh, talking about sort of how you've got to now. So when did you sort of start the idea? When did it sort of first release? All that sort of stuff. So, uh, so actually, the thought was in 2015, uh, around June, July, I came to Ethiopia to see if I can really implement it or launch it in Ethiopia. So the first thing I wanted was I wanted to check out in the rules and regulations of the uh, Ministry of Transportation. And at the same time, you know, uh, the government sees things from a security perspective. So we have to go to like the, uh, the CIA of Ethiopia. Pretty much, uh, we told them, "Hey, this is how we do. This will improve, you know, the transportation problem. But at the same time, it will make us safer because now, you, you know, the drivers know who's getting in the back seat of their car. At the same time, drivers know, like, you know, who like ways to get around. You know, we make it more efficient. So we got the, you know, get go. We got the support letter from them. And then we went, was was that quite an easy sell? Did they kind of just get? All those benefits, or, or was there any sort of pushback against any of them? I mean, there's always a pushback. There's, uh, you have to prove it. You have to tell them, you know, the experience of uh, Kenya. You know, the nearest country where we can compare Ethiopia is Kenya. So we tell them, hey, this is what's going on in Kenya. That's working. So it must work in Ethiopia. Of course, it needs a little bit of modifications. You can't just copy paste it here. You have to, uh, you know, mold it a little bit. So we did that, and then it worked out perfect, actually. And then we went to the Ministry of Transportation and. It was uh, uh, a guy named Dr. Salman. He he got it because he he was educated in Germany, so he knew the idea. He was like, oh, nice. He was like, I wish I was wondering. I was waiting for this moment. He was like, go for it. And all of a sudden, um, okay. And then I returned back to the states. You know, I put together my team here locally, and then we were able to you know make the application. And uh, we approached a lot of banks so they can integrate the, the payment system. So that, I mean, it was. Uh, a process, but it was it was worth it. And okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, when did the first ride? It was take place? Uh, July two thousand sixteen. All right. So we well, we did it. We did a press release on July fourteenth. I believe it was my birthday. <laughs> and uh, in the afternoon, you know, we had twelve drivers online, and they waited all day. And then one of the drivers got our first ride, oh, and nice. then he just couldn't believe it. So. He had the customer in the back seat, and he gave me a call. Yeah, I got the first customer in the back seat. Please talk to him. And you know, they were just eager. He was so happy, and he's actually one of our best driver now. And um, that was our first experience. Oh, fantastic. And um, what was out of interest? Who, who was the who was the first passenger? The, the passenger was actually an expat from the state. Uh -huh. So he was just uh, heard about us on the radio. He just downloaded the no, application. So this wasn't like pre. pre no, no, oh no, oh no. Oh, right. He just heard it. He just downloaded it, and then he tried it. And he had no idea that he was yeah, the first one. Yeah, exactly. He had no idea he was the first one. <laughs> and then we emailed him. Actually, we used his uh, customer service review for our pitch. What was it? What was the customer service? It was review? a great application, and Santayo was a perfect driver. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. And uh, and like roughly how many trips have you had since since then? Uh, over we completed over three thousand two hundred trips. Okay. So far, yeah. Yes, and, yeah. Uh, and is that are you, are you able to sort of begin to see? I mean, are there all the obvious trends around it's busiest at the weekends and yeah. in the, is, is that kind of... Yeah. It's, it's kind of, yes, especially like Fridays and Saturdays. So what we do is uh, we actually, we were giving out 15% uh, off if you, uh, you know, go out, drink, and then rather than you so driving your car, you know, we mm -hmm. come pick you up. So when you do that, you know, we actually give 15% uh, uh, off. So we get more volume on those days like the Friday, Saturday, yeah. you know, uh, nighttime. Uh, in order to get the discount, do you need to prove that you've had lots of beers? 
I mean, no, not really, because we know the time frame and that time, oh, you know, so you're not you're probably not coming from church or school, you know, so we okay. know the time frame. So we just make it open. So we want at the same time, you know, we just want to make that awareness. Huh. But uh, in the near future, what we're going to do is, um, you know, we go to different bars and then, uh, you know, you get drunk or, you know, tipsy and then you want to give us uh, a taxi. I mean, you want to request a taxi. It's going to be um, added to your bill. So from the bar, so they oh, nice. and then you, you take that code and then you punch it in our application, boom, automatically you get that discount. I see. So we're working with a few, uh, you know, brewery companies and bars in Ethiopia. So right. hopefully. Hey, cool. Yeah. So the idea is that I'm sort of at the bar, I've had a few beers, yeah, and then I'm like, God, I need to, I need to get home soon. Exactly. But I don't go on day rides. I tell the barman. So when you quest for a bill, when they bring you a bill, that bill comes with a Z ride code. So if you want it, it's just optional. Oh, I see. So, so that fifteen percent code, so you automatically punch it in our application. I see. Okay, yeah. and then, okay, and so then you've, and then, but is, is the are they still paying as a passenger? Am I still paying you, or am I paying? No, you paying the driver. Paying the driver. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Got so, it. Actually, so. let's go on to that a bit. Um, yeah. So one of the things which uh, surprised me when uh, I first started using Uber in East Africa was yeah. um, that you pay cash. Yeah. Or in some places, you you pay cash. You're right. And it was sort of like a completely new experience yeah. I've never used sort of Uber in that way right right how does it work with day rides it's just the same thing you pay cash okay. uh, the reason is um, you know we use Stripe for internationally issued Visa or MasterCard you know all the Ethiopian uh, banks in Ethiopia use Visa but it's only uh, only works locally I mean within Ethiopia so we can't use international uh, credit card processing companies or fintechs for the service so in ethiopia we don't have any uh, local uh, card, card processing like atm card debit card uh, credit card so what we do is we have to rely on cash okay or the ussd based payment system which is uh, hello cash and ember i'm sure you heard about them yesterday mm -hmm. but the customer base in, in, in the capital is not uh as we want it to be, it's not that huge, so that's what we were forced into. Uh, you know, creating our own uh, debit card uh, processing uh, uh, application. Okay, so, so just so I've got this right, so it's when you say there's no local cards, is in there's no locally issued debit card. There is locally issued debit card, yeah. but there's no a system that will process it. So you cannot pay with your ATM card. So the ATM card in Ethiopia used only to take out cash from, oh, withdraw cash from ATM. That's cool. it. So, so people have plastic cards? Exactly. The only reason is to go to an ATM, ATM take and cash then, out. Exactly. Okay. That's the only uh, purpose I of see. the Ethiopian oh, the ATM. context, yeah. And, so, okay. yeah. and so as a result, doing these sort of is it automatic, you know, these process payments? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't exist. I see. It, it doesn't okay. exist, yeah. And so that's obviously, as well, that's potentially a blocker or like a, a, a roadblock in making it a bit easier for you. Exactly. Okay. I mean, that'll make it a little more uh, inefficient for us because mm -hmm. now we have to track down. I mean, the, our system tells us, you know, this driver made this amount of trips. This is how much, you know, he's supposed to pay Z ride, right? And then what we do is we give them a call and be like, okay, you have to de deposit our cut into our bank account. And they say, okay, I have a customer. Give me a minute. And then it takes a week okay. and days. So uh, we were like, okay, we need to move from this cash society into cashless society, but it's a process. Yeah. And we don't we don't want to wait until another company to come in and then implement this card processing. So yeah. we approached, you know, on the, there's one switch in, in Ethiopia for all the banks. Mm -hmm. They all have stake in it. So that means if you connect it to the system that you automatically have access to all the 18 banks in Ethiopia. Okay. So to support Z-Ride, kind of, you know, I mean, uh, feed uh, each other, we, uh, I mean, we created this uh, Arif Pay, which is a mobile post system. Okay, right. Yeah. So I just need to digest that a bit. So yeah. um, in order to solve this payment processing yeah. issue, yeah. you're basically looking to solve it yourself. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And well, that involves going to e Ethi Switch. So yes. What's, Ethi -switch. what's the link between Arif Pay? Is it Arif Pay? Yes, Arif Pay. What's yeah, the link between Arif Pay Arif and Pay. Ethi Switch? So... Um, ET Switch is uh, the core banking system for okay. our for the the payment gateway system for all the banks in Ethiopia. Um, what does payment gateway mean? Uh, payment gateway means uh, so let's say um, you want to pay with your ATM card to the system the, the, to process it. The system has to be uh, um, integrated with ET Switch. So ET Switch is the one that allows you to process uh, payment systems. Okay, wait. So you can pay with an ATM card. 
you can't pay uh, on, oh. on it, but if you go to hotels, yeah. they accept it. But paying is similar to withdrawing money or transferring money on an ATM machine. It's the okay. same thing. Yeah. Okay. You know, so technically, we don't have payment system, but yeah. you can transfer from one account to another account. Oh, so I see, with this ATM card. ATM cards, exactly. Oh. So yeah. if we switch it, it's the same process. You only add tax, right? Okay, sure. <laughs> so we just made it, took that idea and then made it available on your mobile device. I see. So basically what you're doing, you have your mobile device. Yeah. And it's like you're transferring money. Exactly. From, yeah, as, as opposed to... In the back end, yeah, it's yeah. transferring money, like technically. Yeah. But uh, uh, on your application, it's so sure as if, uh, you know, you go to Starbucks and then, um, you know, you have this post machine. The yeah. enter, okay, it has one latte, right? Yeah. And then <clears throat> to process it, what do you do? You swipe the card, right? Mm -hmm. So you're actually transferring money from your oh, account okay. to the... Starbucks account. I see. So here, what we do is, for example, if you're paying uh, Timber, mm -hmm. you say pay, and then we have a headphone jack uh, car reader that goes into the headphone jack, and then yeah. you swipe it, and then you enter your PIN number, just like okay. as if you enter oh, it. In so, your... so for all intents and purposes, exactly. it's the same thing. It's but the same it's just thing. behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, exactly. I see. And, but it's required you yeah. to build this because it didn't exist before. Exactly. It doesn't exist before. Okay, all right. But now we give, we're going to give our customers incentives. You know, if, you, if the ride is, you know, 100 bird, then hey, you get 50% off if you use your bank card. Okay. So and that way we're investing in the future rather than, you know, after like today. Yeah. And uh, 100 bird is like $4. Exactly. Roughly, yeah. Okay. Okay. Roughly, yeah. Um, okay, great. Yeah. So, the, just, so as a passenger, I'd then be getting in the car and it comes to the end and it says, right, you now, your trip cost 100 bird. Yeah. And then the, I'd get my card out the driver would get his phone out and we'd swipe it. Yes. And we'd go. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. So it wouldn't quite be the automatic thing that Uber has. Well, exactly. Because, yeah. I mean, we could do that. <clears throat> uh, we, we can also do that. But the, the way we want it to be is we want every shoe shiner, we want every supermarket, every other businesses to use our system. Ah, I see. Exactly. So they, we want it. So we want it to work for, for things bigger than just say ride. Sure. But uh, we can make uh, the uh, seamless uh, payment system just like uh, Uber does. Or mm -hmm. Uber does actually Uber uses Stripe, so mm -hmm. we also we also use Stripe for internationally issued cars. So if you have like Mastercard, Visa, it works just like it works oh, on Uber true. exactly mm -hmm. right now. But for the locally context, <clears throat> if we do that, we get more customers, and the banks are willing to integrate our system with them because not only they're getting the taxi riders, they're also getting another customers to use the system. It. So it's just uh, the benefit of uh, you know uh, mass know. market. Yeah. So um, how far into thinking I'm going to do Uber for Africa? Did you realize that actually I need to make a whole new company which is around payment processing? <laughs> uh, when did I, did we figure it out? Yeah. Was it? I, mean, I, I always or? knew uh, okay. this was going to be a challenge, yeah. but um, I thought it was how fast things are moving in Ethiopia. I thought someone was going to actually implement card processing. But all I see is the OCHD based payment system, uh, similar to M-Pesa, which mm -hmm. has, you know, the most successful company, I mean, fintech company in, in, in Africa, I mean, even throughout the world, right? But when you come to Ethiopia, uh, we have similar service for the past seven years, right? And uh, M-Pesa handles 60% of Kenya's GDP. When you come to Ethiopia, it's not even 0 0.01. That means, you know, M-Pesa, I mean, um, Hello Cash and um, Amber didn't understand the need of the customers. Mm -hmm. So Ethiopian uh, customer service, I mean, Ethiopian are different, way different from Kenya. I mean, way different from the rest of Africa. How? They want something tangible, something they want to feel, something they want to see. Okay. You know? So, so if someone uh, say, okay, I want to borrow 100 bur or 100 dollars from you, he wanted to borrow it, like the physical, like he wanted to fill the cash, yeah. right? If you say, oh, let me transfer it, you say, mm, no, give me the cash, you know what I mean? So uh, when you think about, you know, um, uh, technology, you have to give them something they can see, something they can touch. I see. So rather than sending texts back and forth, uh, they would rather swipe, enter the pen, okay. and then see, okay, your transaction has been successful. So they want to see that. So you have to understand your, your customer behavior, right. yeah. And how did you, um, I mean, being Ethiopian, did you just know that? Or, or did you sort of do some research? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I've done some research, but being Ethiopian and being born here, coming here, you know, two, three times a year, I understand the, the need of the customer. Hmm. So, <clears throat> so even sometimes when you go to different offices, government offices, I pick their brains before I pitch my idea. 
to them and then I see that how they see things and then I tell them uh, what they want to hear and then you get the green light to go that's why a lot of people you know um, a lot of the, like diasporas like Ethiopians they come here with the Western mentality and then they want to do it and it's, it, so for example you go to office if they say um, like taking a phone number off like some government officials might sound weird in the West right here it's normal. You take okay. their cell phone number. You call them at night, in the morning. You're like, did you do my? Did you check my proposal? So it's normal. So you have to, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Just uh, if you, especially if you're coming from the West. And I mean, I had that problem at first, right? But I, I adapted it. So yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. And um, you said that you used to work for Uber in yes in the states yes so you said, how long were you there uh, for, I worked for Uber for about four years so yeah. I, I mean I still have a pool of uh, limousines working for Uber right now yeah. uh, in in Boston so um, I remember when they first launched in, in Massachusetts actually their office was uh, very close to my house and uh, a lot of taxi drivers in, in Boston are Ethiopian so they were coming after the taxi driver saying hey if you work with us you know please like they were doing <coughs> sales and I was like what do you guys do and then uh, um, the, the, the local uh, representative told me how it works I was like oh my god that's so smart because <laughs> you know taxi is very expensive in Boston and they say okay we're gonna be there in 15 minutes and they never show up so I had that problem I was like oh my god this company is gonna be huge <laughs> You know, so I was like, oh, how can I help you guys? They're like, okay, can you bring us like drivers, you know, uh, to uh, sign up for us? I was like, sure. And then I did that, and then I helped them out, you know, bring drivers. At the same time, I bought my own limousines, and then I hired a driver, and I also bought another car, and I, I even used to drive over. So it's just I knew where they started, and I know where they are, and I know, <clears throat> you know, the moves they meet. So, uh, so you know, I thought to myself, hey, I should do the same thing in in, in Africa. I see. Yeah. And uh, and how have you funded it so far? Uh, myself. So <laughs> right after I graduated from, from college, um, I used to own Ethiopian restaurant with my brother. So what we did is uh, I, we sold it and uh, I took my cut and came to Ethiopia. I see. Yeah. Cool. So um, the Ethiopian restaurant has funded Zayrides. Yes, exactly. Well. Thanks. Is the is the view to continue this or are you looking for outside investment? Yes, we are actually uh, funding right now. We are Series A funding and uh, we're talking to a few investors uh, from uh, Kenya, even London, uh, even the States and uh, from the US. So yeah, it's, it's an it's ongoing uh, process. Oh. Yeah. What are some of the, uh, what's, been, what's been like the most interesting question you've had in your pitch? Uh, like when you're talking to investors, what's something where you actually have not thought It's funny, so <laughs> when pe people think of uh, Kenya, they automatically think, oh, that's like, uh, you know, the birthplace of African technology, right? When they think of Ethiopia, it's the birthplace of coffee, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, like, why are you in a coffee? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, I mean, you're not exporting coffee is <laughs> usually uh, the question. And then sometimes, you know, people get impressed by how far we have come. And um, it's just that, you know, you, you don't really hear about the Ethiopian success stories. You know, you hear about South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya. And, and Ethiopia, even though in East Africa, and some people have actually forgotten about us that we have the, the second most populous country in, in, in Africa. So they get really impressed and uh, they're like, wow, like, it's just mind blowing. But the most interesting question we get um, is that, uh, how come we're not offering the taxi service with private cars like Uber does? So, okay. so in Ethiopia, you're not allowed to uh, use your personal car as a business or uh, to give transportation service. Hey, wh why is that? It's just it's just part of the regulations. You know, so what, what's the rationale behind it? it they safe, say safe, safe you're too? taking uh, income away from the taxi drivers that actually bought a taxi, invested money, so much money in terms of you know, I mean, buying new cars, painting it, and you know, they have a lot of kids that they, you know, it's just family business. So mm -hmm. we don't really want to touch that. I but uh, I mean, given the given the demand, I, I need I, we need at least forty thousand cabs to meet today's demand. And we only have 8,000 taxis in the city. So okay. the, the, the gap is huge. So the government need to realize that. So for us to uh, tighten the, the gap, you know, we are uh, 
we um, established a share company where you know anyone uh, can buy a share starting from 15,000 bur and then that money will be used to uh, buy brand new taxis so our plan is to buy uh, 1,000 uh, taxis in the next year and then you know <coughs> those taxis will work under the right we will manage it and uh, you know the shareholders will get uh, the, the profit I see yeah, yeah. okay so um Oh, interesting. So I've not sort of thought of that. So yeah, yeah a big part of your business is um, increasing supply. Exactly. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And and it's like if you say that there are forty thousand cabs needed, but yeah. there are only eight thousand. Exactly. Like wh why haven't why hasn't that sorted itself out? Why hasn't that um, why hasn't that changed? What why haven't, why hasn't the market sort of said right? Okay, there's an undersupply. Therefore. Exactly. So that's why I was I was saying earlier how Ethiopian uh, uh, mentality is a bit different. You know, the people have a negative uh, views of taxi driving. You know, even if they have money and taxi drivers are making a lot of money, people don't really get into the taxi driving business. Oh, okay. you know, it's just like, oh, I right know. Like, you know, that's the mentality that you get. So if you really see the demand, actually, the taxi business is bigger than Ethiopian Airlines, which is the most successful airline. In, in, in Africa, mm -hmm. right? They made more money than all the airlines combined in Africa. But Wait, <laughs> it, Ethiopian taxis? You no, know, the Ethiopian airlines, oh, Ethiopian right? Makes more. So if you really do uh, manage it properly, you know, if, they, if, you, um, if, if you force a taxi driver, the companies to work 24 hours a day, right? To charge per kilometer and time spent, right? And if you uh, show them and if you train them uh, to give uh, professional service, they can make so much money, more than they can imagine. You know, the, 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 the taxi drivers that work with us actually bought a second car now. Hmm. Yeah, either a personal car, even they, they have drivers who added uh, additional taxis. So they already seeing the benefit of working in a schedule, hmm. you know, and a per, per tariff and uh, things like that. So it's just the mentality. That's why okay, uh, we were thinking about, okay, let's train the drivers. Let's bring them. Let's give them uh, a loan through, uh, you know, local banks, and let them help. Uh, let them uh, let us help them, you know, buy out and import brand new cars, mm -hmm. so they, they can see the benefit. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. it's just the uh, demand is there. The market is there. What we don't have is the supply. So it's just unlocking the supply. Exactly. exactly. Now, one of the um, sort of pushbacks against Uber yeah. balance is um, that. Drivers are saying, you know, we're getting paid too little. Yes. Is that something which is on the horizon, going to be on the horizon in Ethiopia? Because, like, for example, in Nairobi a few weeks ago, like uh, Uber drivers and all the others went on strike. Yeah, yes. And they're like, we, you know, we need regulation to ensure that there is a minimum price. Exactly. How are you, for, are you foreseeing that potentially happening here? See, th that's one of the problems. Uh, that's one of the things. The, dri the drivers are the engine of your business. So without the drivers, Without our drivers, we wouldn't be here. Even though there's thousands of customers, it doesn't matter if you don't have someone to drive them around, right? So we need to have a strong relation, and then it's a good relation with our drivers. So what we do is actually every two weeks, every three weeks, we bring the taxi association representatives and then we tell them what we plan to do before we make changes. Whereas in Uber, for example, uh, for UberX uh, in Boston, it used to be two dollars and forty cents per kilometer, right? And then I woke up one day morning, and then I see an application that's a dollar twenty. They cut it in half. You can't, you can't just mm. do that, right? Here, we bring them, and then we hear what they have to say. What is the problem? And we tell them our plan. And then based on, let's say, if when we cut down our price, right? And they try it for a couple of weeks. And if they're not happy then we go back to the original price. But the, I mean, the current price right now we charge in per kilometer is actually 40% cheaper than the previous price. So everyone is happy at the moment. So in the future, uh, we want to bring down the price so more customers can use it, but it's definitely going to be uh, based on both sides, our side and the driver's okay. side. Yeah. That's a good, a good mentality. That oh, yeah. Oh, you, do, you need yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, Couple more questions. Sure. Um, if you sort of project for the next six to twelve months, what, what sort of the main things on the horizon for, for Zayvide? So we want to get the hundred thousand uh, customer uh, base, 
Uh, that's one of the things that we really want to do. We want to have 25 more corporate accounts just within uh, Addis Ababa that accounts for hotels and uh, NGOs and you know private companies. That, that basically means if ever an NGO or a hotel needs to issue a ride, exactly. Do for you. Exactly. Okay. So what we do is right now we sign with uh, hotels and to the hotels whenever they need a, a taxi like the hotel guests need a taxi they give us a call mm -hmm. and then uh, you know the call center is very busy so what we're planning to do is actually providing tablets to each hotel that work with us and then let's say you come in and you're not from here and <clears throat> you know you just don't wanna you might not have internet to download our application so we have a, a tab at the on the lobby of every hotel so you just go to the to, to, to the tab and then you you know, you pick which kind of taxes you want, and then you just you can just request it, yeah. and then we know where it's coming from, and then we'll send you the nearest driver. So that's uh, the one thing we want to <clears throat> get into, and mm -hmm. we are actually working on it. And then uh, integrating our payment system is is, is also uh, uh, so also in the plan. And Very yeah, cool. and, All right. yeah. And, uh, and people listening at home, how can they? Follow along with what's happening with uh, Zay Ride and Arifay. Sure. So we have a Facebook page, which is Zay Ride. We uh, also have a LinkedIn account. We all have a Twitter, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, what else? Well, so Instagram. Yeah, do you know, is Instagram work for that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Well, why is it called Zay Rides? What's the what, Why is it called Zay Ride? Good question. <laughs> Zai. It's actually it's Zai. That's the way it's uh, pronounced yeah, locally. Zai, Zai yeah. Zai. Zai is a uh, five island in, in, in Ethiopia close to uh, around Arba Minch. It's a, it's a city. So th on those five islands is a, a tribe called Zai. And they are on the verge of dying because they live on an island. There's no school. There's no uh, hospital. So whenever they want you know, access to school for their kids, they migrate to the capital city or other areas. So they, um, you know, they marry uh, uh, people from another tribe or they come to the city, they forget their language. So now there are only 5,000 left. So it's, they're on the verge of dying. So we just wanted to give them recognition. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, well, Abtami, thanks so much. Oh, really thank good. you. Thank you. <laughs> Before we head, just a quick moment to say thank you for listening. You can see show notes for this episode by heading to www.samfloy.com forward slash podcast. That's S-A-M-F-L-O-Y dot com forward slash podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast and stay updated on future episodes, as well as a few other things like behind the scenes pictures, then please check out our Facebook page. Search for the East Africa Business Podcast and you can like it from there. Finally, if you felt this was a good episode, then please do leave a rating for the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others like you find the show, and I for one would really appreciate it. In any case, have a great week and speak to you soon.